Hello geometry students and welcome to uh, the second part of the proof of the exterior angle inequality theorem. Okay. And what I'd like to prove in this part is part two, okay, which says that the measure of angle one is greater than the measure of angle four. So that's, that's, this is what we want to show. This is what we want to show. Okay. And The way that we're going to go about this is very similar to what we did in the in part one, but notice here, uh, angle four is down here. It isn't up here, so we can't quite do the same trick that we did before. Okay. So this is a new method. This is the idea here. We are going to um, create. So this is the I, the main idea, and it's it's nice to kind of sketch this out a little bit. Create a angle. Uh, congruent to angle one, and so we'll call this angle six. So to do that, well, take my ruler, I extend this side here. Let me draw my triangle a little bit better. So here I have angle six, right. and then show that the measure of angle 6 is greater than the measure of angle 4. And we're going to do a similar um, trick to what we did before. Okay, so this is still side A, this is still B up here, this point here, that's still C. Okay. Now you can see that since 6 and 1 are vertical angles, they're the same measure. So if, some, if 6 is bigger than 4, then 1 must also be bigger than 4 must also be bigger than 4. So proof, and we'll get to it now. So first we are going to find the midpoint here. So we are going to um, label the midpoint of AC, and we're going to call this N this time. Uh, then from then we're going to connect B to N. So connect B to N. And my reason here is Euclid's first postulate. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing we did before, extend uh, double the length of BN. So take this, extend it so that it's matching to the other one. And we'll call this new point here uh, Q. And again, this is Euclid's second postulate. And then connect Q to C. Okay. And again, this is Euclid's first. Okay. Well, let's see where we're at now. Well, we're in a similar situation that we had before. Um, BN and QN are congruent because we made them that way. Let me write this down. Give myself a little bit more space here. Okay. So I can say that uh, BN is congruent to QN because of the construction in step and so you see, this is very similar to what we had before. Um, then we can see that AN is congruent to CN. This is because N is the midpoint of AC. And finally, these two triangles 
So these two angles, this one, this one, and, and this one here, are congruent. So seven triangle A and B is, or angle A and B, sorry, is congruent to angle C and Q because they're vertical. And uh, triangle A and B is congruent to triangle C and Q by side angle side. And the, the angle that we're very interested in this time is, let's see, so first, uh, what we care most about is angle 6. That's, this is angle 6 right here. That's the whole thing. Let me make sure that's clear. And we're trying to show that uh, 6 is bigger than 4. Okay, we're trying to show that 6 is bigger than 4. Well, similar to what we had going on before, this little angle in here, we'll call this angle 7. In green there, okay? Hopefully you can see that. This is angle 7. That's, that's this one in here. Let me try that better. This is angle 7. So we can say that angle 7 corresponds to angle 4, so it must be congruent to angle 4, by CPCT. But, wait a minute, just like we had before, we can tell that the measure of angle 6 is greater than the measure of angle 7 because angle 6 contains angle 7. But 7 and 4 are the same thing, so that means angle 6 must be greater than angle 4. Okay. Substitution. Using step 9. So this is a lot, almost identical to what we had before. But let's not forget, this is what we're trying to show. We need to get angle 1 to be bigger than angle 4, not angle 6. But look at this picture. I know it's, it may be a little bit crowded here that, from what we had before, but angle 6, that's the red part. That is congruent to angle 1. Look at angle 6 and angle 1. Look at the red stuff and the yellow stuff. Those are vertical angles. So step 10 or step, step 12 rather, the measure of angle 6 is equal to the measure of angle 1 because they are vertical angles. And now we can make a substitution. We can take 1 and substitute it into here. So lucky 13, the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 4. And this is substitution using step, really steps 11 and 12. So I take step 11, which is a statement that I had before, and then I take step 12 and I make the substitution 1 in for 6. Okay, now there you have it. Part 2 is also complete. So once again, the trick to doing these, these this particular proof is, there's a lot of tricks here, but it's to create some triangles that we can control. We know that they are going to be, at least parts of them are going to be congruent to some other triangles. Okay. And we want to be able to find some way to, um, to get congruent angles out of there. In this case, 4 and 7 was very helpful. And then we use the fact that 7 is inside of 6 in order to show that 6 is bigger than 7. And then we tied 6 back to 1 because okay, they're vertical. So that means six is bigger than four. six is bigger than seven, so six is bigger than four because four and seven are the same thing. And six is bigger or is equal to one because they're vertical. So these two statements here, one must be bigger than four. Okay. And if you're uh, you know feeling a little bit overwhelmed with this, that's okay. This is again our first big proof, and it's gonna feel. Uh, overwhelming from time to time, um, but hopefully as we go through this and we do more and more proofs, 
you will be able to get more familiar with this and then um, be able to construct your own proofs later on. Well, thank you for watching. As always, ask your teacher if you need help. Keep working hard and have a wonderful day.